All right, so up till now, you have been very diligent. You implemented the whole OO flow yourself. And now it's time to look at the latest Spring Boot 2.1 and the latest Spring Security 5 and look at the magic when it comes to OAuth implementations. And we're going to implement buttons like login with GitHub, login with Facebook, login with Google, something like that in this episode. So let's check it out. Imagine you're building a web application and you're having a login stream, but you don't want users to be able to log in with their username and password, but instead you present them a login with GitHub link. So they need a GitHub user account. And then once they click that link, they get redirected to GitHub. They identify themselves on GitHub and then they get redirected back to your application. And that's what we're going to build now. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to sign in to your GitHub account Go to Settings, Developer Settings, OAuth Apps, and register a new application. That's the web application you're building. And I will call the application my test. It's a bit, that's not the best name, but you get the point. My homepage URL is localhost8080, and the authorization callback URL is also localhost8080. And obviously you'd need to put a different path here for a production system, but for our test, localhost 8080 is fine. You need no description, and then you simply click register application. You get URL must be a valid URL. So make sure to put the HTTP there, like so. Register the application. And now you get a client ID back and a client secret. And that's important. These two values are important and we'll need them in a second. But before we continue here, let's go back to our application. And in the source repository, I made a, a new empty branch with an empty Spring Boot application. And you can have a look at the POMXML file. You'll see you have the Spring Boot starter web dependency inside and the starter theme leaf dependency. So you get a web server up and running, which is capable of HTML templating. And the test dependency, we don't need that. Now, to get back to our example, create a new HTML page. It's the index page and put it into the static folder. And you just want to have a paragraph saying, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. So that's basically the page a user sees once he logs into your system. It's not a nice page, it's not a great page, but it will do. And we need to protect our web application now and make the user log in to GitHub before he can access that page. But first of all, let's run the application to see if there's anything missing. The application boots up. You get Tomcat started on port 8080. And just to make sure to double check, go to your browser, go to localhost 8080, and you can see the index.html page. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Great. Now go back to your POMXML file. You want to use OAuth, and for that, there's the Spring Security Library. And thankfully, there's also a Spring Boot starter for Spring Security, which pulls in the latest Spring Security 5. So you'll just copy the dependency and then say, well, this is the Spring Boot starter security. And as you want to work with OAuth, you need two more dependencies. They don't reference group ID or Spring Framework Boot. Instead, they reference security. No version, because that comes with the Maven Spring Boot dependency version management. That was a long line. And what you need is Spring Security OAuth 2-Client. That's the first library. And the second library, you can just copy stuff down here, is not client, but to say it in Spanish, Jose, and that stands for JSON Object Signing and Encryption. And don't worry about it for now, uh, what it is if you don't know what it is, because I'll explain it later. But in any case, these are all the dependencies you need. You just add it. Nothing else, so you leave the application as is. You can see it's a normal Spring Boot application. And now you simply rerun the application. Wait a second till everything compiles. Obviously, in the external libraries tab, you can make sure you'll find all these Spring Boot security libraries you just added. 
Tomcat started. Let's go back to the browser. Low closed 8080. Hit F5 again and suddenly you get redirected to a login page. Please sign in, username, and password. And that comes from Spring Security by default. That's a bit crazy. It's a lot of magic going on, but you get redirected to a slash login page and have this form here. And the form looks like, well, username, and password. You don't have a database where you store usernames and passwords. You want to get started with OAuth. And again, you can extend the magic. You go to your application properties file. And now, first of all, let's stop the application and then start writing spring.security.oauth2.client.registration.github.client equals. You copy the line. And if you remember what I said a couple of minutes ago, you also need the client secret. And these two values should come, hopefully, from your GitHub page. So client ID, you put it in here. Go back again, client secret, like so. Copy that, paste it in here. And hopefully I wrote these two properties properly. Spring Security Auth 2 Client Registration GitHub. Right, so run the application again, nothing else changed. You just added these two lines here. The application boots up again. Now this time, actually it's also very nice to create new private windows. Go to localhost8080 because then you won't store any cookies or whatever. So localhost8080, and suddenly, instead of seeing the username password dialog, you're getting redirected to the GitHub page. It says sign into GitHub to continue to my test. That's the application you created a couple of minutes ago. Username or email address, password. And that's your GitHub username and password. And I'll put my username in here, like so. Paste in the password, click sign in. Then I get a new page saying authorize my test. My test by Marco Bela wants to access your Marco Bela account and it wants to read the personal user data. And then you can have another look at what that means by clicking one more, what exactly the user data is. But now let's click authorize Marco Bela and the reauthorization will redirect to localhost8080. That's one of the URLs you put in when you register the application. Click it. It takes a second, you're back in your application and suddenly you're logged in. You can see you made it there and now you can literally make it anywhere. Great, that's a great success moment. So that's kind of worked, even though there's a lot of magic involved. Let's make things even more crazy by shutting down the application and then copying these two properties. And as you might have guessed, OAuth 2 client registration, we put in GitHub. So Spring Security seems to know about GitHub but Spring Security also knows about Facebook, for example. It also knows about Google, and it knows about Twitter. These are default built-ins, and if you wanna, for example, connect to Stripe, you'll have to write your own integration, but for GitHub and Facebook, Twitter, and Google, you can just add these properties. Now, obviously, this here won't work because you will just da-da-da. You'll have to register the app with Facebook, put it inside, but, I want to show you something. You just rerun the application. Open up your browser again. As I said, new private window. Go to localhost 8080. Now let's have a look what suddenly happened. We didn't actually change any code or what whatsoever, just the properties. Suddenly our login page looks different. It says login with OAuth 2, and it make, gives you two choices. It gives you the choice of logging with GitHub, and it gives you the choice of logging with Facebook. And as an exercise, I want you to create an application. If you have a Facebook account, create an OAuth application with Facebook, put in your credentials and try to log in with Facebook and see if that also works. Or with Twitter or with Google, it's your choice. But apart from that, we already saw a lot of matching in this episode. And I think that's enough for today. Okay, that was quite a lot of magic. Now in the next episode, let's have a look at how we can make things more configurable and not have Spring Boots or Spring Security's defaults 
and also how we can get as much data as we can from the user's GitHub profile as long as we have his access token. Let's get right after it. 